And here comes the most unusual part, and not everyone does it this way. If you have another way that you like which works for you, that's fine with me. But this is what I found is very useful, uh, and it's very helpful for us as extension two students. The R stands for regions. Let me explain this for you. It's time to actually draw something. We've done lots of like pre-work. Now it's time to put pen to paper on a graph. Have a look at the features that you're going to need to put on here, and let's choose an appropriate sort of space to do this in. Okay. Um, this is not the pen I thought. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put in all of the features I'm already aware of. So x equals two, x equals three. If I go one, two, three. Well, I missed. You get the idea. There we go. Fixed. <laughs> bad day. It's the heat, obviously. Um, let's fix that. Axis. There we go. Uh, x equals two, x equals three. What else am I going to put on here? Intercepts. Uh, intercepts, so I've got 0 and 4. Oh. Didn't miss that time. Okay. Um, I've also got the horizontal asymptote, so I'll, I'll chuck that in up here. You should label all of these things as well. Okay, have I accounted for everything so far? Yeah. Are you happy with it? Yeah, good. Okay. Now, for this bit that's next, oh, we're going to struggle. Yeah, we'll do this one. Okay. What I'm going to do now is remember how we factorized earlier, okay? Uh, here we go. One, two, three, four factors that have been multiplied and divided together in some order, okay? I want you to imagine these now not as functions, but as just numbers, okay? Now, if I gave you four positive numbers and I didn't tell you what their sizes were, their magnitudes, I just told you they were positive, and you multiply them together, you wouldn't know very much about the size of the answer. But you should know a lot about the direction, the sign of the answer. What is the sign going to be? Positive. Clearly has to be positive. There's nowhere for a negative to have crept in, right? So if you have four positives, you multiply them together, you get a positive. What about if I divided one of them instead of multiplying? What do you think? It's Still be the same, right? Again, there's nowhere for a negative to creep in, okay? Now, I can do this with different combinations. Instead of four positives, I could go like one positive, one negative... Actually, let's do three negatives. How about that? Okay? If you've got a positive and three negatives, what will the sign be? Negative. Yeah, like these guys are going to cancel, and then these guys just give you a negative. Okay? Now, therefore, I'm now going to stop thinking about numbers and think about these factors. I know what these factors look like. For example, y equals x. I can plot y equals x on here. If you've got like a light pencil, that would be helpful, but I don't have those. So I'm just going to do these dotted. Okay? Uh, here's y equals x. That's what y equals x looks like. Sometimes it's negative, sometimes it's positive. Right? Uh, what about x minus 2? That's another one of my factors. And x minus 3 and x minus 4. I'm going to draw all of them. This is going to look like this. Uh, here's x minus 2. There's x minus 2. Here comes x minus 3. <laughs> And x minus 4. Okay? Alright. So now I want to think about how these factors contribute to each other as I multiply and divide them in different combinations. Let's go from left to right. Okay? On the left hand side over here, if you look to the left of x equals 0, uh, I know I haven't drawn them all the way, but look at all four of the factors. Do you see they're all going to be negative over here? Right? Well, you've got a, a negative, a negative, a negative, a negative. When you multiply and divide them in some combination, what sign will you get? Four negatives, positive. cancel, cancel, positive. Okay? So therefore, when I put them all together, which is what this is, throw them all together, right? The result will be positive, okay? So I'm going to, see I'm running out of colors, this is a bit of a pain. Uh, I'm going to shade in this color over here. Over here, right? So to the left of this point, Four factors come together, they're all negative, so the result has to be positive. The regions I'm shading are going to tell me where the function has to go. Okay, let's have a look in here. In between x equals 0 and x equals 2, look at what happens. Look at your four factors. This one has transitioned from negative to positive, so I've got one positive factor, and how many negative factors? Two. Uh, three. One, two, three. I always have four in total. In fact, that's this situation here, isn't it? Right? Positive, negative, negative, negative. Yes? So when I combine them all together, their sign is going to be negative. Do you see that? So that goes all the way up 
to them. Do you see that? And in fact, you start getting a bit tired of this because you're like, oh, it just, it just swaps every time. Do you notice that? Have a look in this little region, right? I've got two positive and I've got two negative. Multiplying or dividing in some combination. Two positive, two negative gives you A. Positive, positive. Because you're multiplying these black dotted lines together or, or dividing. It doesn't really matter. Right? It's it's um, I've got two more edges to go, right? So in between here and here, positive, 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 negative. It just swaps back and forth every single time. And then the last one, the last one is positive, 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 positive. Of course, you're going to end um, up here. Okay, there you go. So that was the R. I shaded the regions. Okay? We did a lot of pre-work. That took some time because you're not familiar with this process. But now, I'm done. Now I just have to make everything fit. Again, let's go from left to right. I've got a horizontal asymptote that I need to approach. Right? And then I've got to come down to this intercept. You see that? That's what the X means. Okay. And then what happens down here? What's, what's going on? Negative. I'm negative and I've got to get towards this asymptote. Do you see that? This is not a crazy shape. It's going to look like this. Right? That's all it has to do. You see how it stays in my regions and it goes through my intercept and it approaches both the asymptotes I know it's supposed to. You with me so far? Okay. All right, now it's a little bit busy, but you can see I've got this area shaded. What's going to happen up here? Have a look. Notice I've got two vertical asymptotes and I can't cross, right? I can't ever cross vertical ones. And I've got to stay positive, yeah? Mm. Looks to me like it's going to be something like this. Like a parabola-y sort of shape, okay? Now we'll point out, um, I don't know whether I cross or not, but I don't really care that much because this horizontal asymptote, does he, do I care about him in the middle of the graph? Answer? No, it's got no relevance to me. I can go away from it, I can go through it, no big deal. Okay? It only tells me at the edges. Does it look good so far? Have I, have I stayed in the right regions? Over here, last bit, do you see? I've got to go negative here. I'm going to pass through the axis, and then I'm going to be positive up here, but I've got an asymptote to go towards. Right? An asymptote to go towards. So do you see it? Yeah? So I'm going to go like that. And that's it.